Hello guys, this is Justin Bibeled and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, It's Organic. Ilalaban kahit kanino, oo, simple lang ako at malabo mong magtipuhan Kaya okay nang kahit sa FB mo lang mapusuan kasi Di na mapigilan ang sariling mapaipit sa iyo Ano ba to? Gusto ka laging mapapit Hello, this is Jason Bibelen, aka Organizon118, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So last week, or last episode of our uh, uh, Don't Panic, It's Organic, we have discussed about the molecular, structural, line, and condensed formula for alkanes. At this point, we will discuss uh, properties of alkanes, then we go to the nomenclature of alkanes, then to cyclic alkanes or cycloalkanes. So first, we're going to discuss the properties of alkanes. So according to the valence shell electron pair repulsion or BSEPR, generally, the geometry of alkanes is tetrahedral or we have already discussed that because of the carbon, which is actually a tetravalent carbon, and a one half uh, found out or discovered that uh, this tetrahedral or tetravalent carbon is actually lies on a tetrahedron. So therefore, the general structure for alkanes, which are actually saturated hydrocarbons that contains only carbon to carbon single bonds and also carbon to hydrogen bonds, which is actually tetrahedral with a band angle of 109.5 degrees okay as hydrocarbons alkanes are actually nonpolar that means they cannot be or they are sparingly soluble to polar substances like water so if you are going to put uh, alkanes or butane or methane in water so it's actually sparingly soluble so it it's not really uh, soluble in water that all of its components are actually uh, uniformly distributed in water. But because of the non-polarity of alkanes, uh, it cannot be or it, 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 it is actually insoluble in water. And since alkanes are non-polar, then these are uh, alkanes can be soluble also in non-polar substances. Okay? The non-polarity of your alkanes is actually will differ if they it is if it is actually saturated with with a with a lot or with with a, with the increasing hydrocarbon chain. Okay, so the more the hydrocarbon chains are increased in the structure, the more it becomes non-polar. Okay, so for example, hexane is more non-polar than your butane or pentane okay so the more it is saturated the more it is uh, increasing in a hydrocarbon chain the more it becomes non-polar and also the physical properties for alkanes it is actually has a low melting points and low boiling points and they are also less dense than water Okay, so that is the really the properties for alkanes. <coughs> and the longer the hydrocarbon chain, the greater its molecular weight, therefore the higher the melting point and the boiling point and greater the density. So the more it is saturated and the more it is actually increased in hydrocarbon chain, the more it has a greater molecular weight and therefore the higher the melting point and the boiling point and the greater its density. So we would expect that hexane would have a greater melting and boiling point than butane or pentane and would have a greater density than butane, than propane, than ethane. Okay, so that's it. So we have the examples or a table that shows you the comparisons of uh, melting point and boiling point of our uh, first 10 straight chain alkanes. So, as the 
number of carbons are actually increasing in the chain, also the melting point and boiling point are also increasing. Okay? So you would expect that decaying would have the greatest melting point of all. Okay? <coughs> Since decaying would have a greater molecular weight, and therefore it has also a greater uh, has a greater density. So therefore, it would have been uh, gre have greater melting point and boiling point than the rest of the straight chain okay okay so it's increasing in melting point increasing in boiling point and also increasing in number of carbons here okay now let's move on to our next topic which are alkyl groups alkyl groups are very important because some of our or mostly of our substituents are actually composed of what we call an alkyl groups now, what is an alkyl group? Alkyl groups result when a hydrogen atom is actually removed from an alkane. So, how does this actually form? Okay, so for example, if you have a methane, so when one hydrogen is actually removed from your methane, it becomes CH3. Okay, so a hydrogen is removed, it becomes CH3. And if it is actually attached to your uh, state chain or it becomes a substituent, then the name of the CH3 uh, group of atoms is actually what we call the methyl. Okay? So neglecting your A and E, <coughs> you change that into YL, pertaining to what we call an alkyl. Okay? So from alkane, from alkane, when hydrogen is removed, it becomes an alkyl, okay? So from methane, hydrogen is removed, then this becomes a methyl, okay? So you notice the formula for, for, for this, so it really has a difference in one hydrogen only, okay? So like for example, for ethane, ethane is C2H6, condensed formula is CH3CH3, when one hydrogen is removed, that becomes ethyl okay and so on for propane when one hydrogen is removed that becomes propyl when butane when one hydrogen is removed that becomes butyl okay and so on and so forth so i have here a table that shows to you the alkyl group structure for the first five continuous chain okay so this is what we call the method i already uh, give to you that as an example this is an ethyl, this is a propyl, so from propane, which is an alkane, it becomes propyl, okay, when you remove one hydrogen, okay, from butane, that becomes butyl, from pentane, that becomes pentyl, and so on and so forth, okay. Carbon atoms are also classified according to the number of carbon atoms to which they are attached, Okay, so we have what we call uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary carbon. So what are these carbons? So a primary carbon is that when a carbon directly bonded to one carbon only, so you notice, huh? it's only one carbon that is bonded to that carbon, then that carbon is actually a primary carbon. Okay, a secondary carbon is that when that carbon is bonded to two carbons, then that carbon is a secondary carbon. A tertiary carbon is a carbon that is bonded to three carbons. Okay, and lastly, a quaternary carbon is that <coughs> that carbon is bonded to four carbons. Okay, you get it? Okay, so I have here an example on how this primary, secondary, tertiary carbons are actually located. Okay, so for example, you have this structure. Okay, you notice that this, this carbon, wait. Okay, that carbon there, okay, is actually bonded to this carbon and that carbon also. 
Okay, so when you draw the structural formula for this, that carbon is actually bonded to this carbon, and that, that carbon is actually bonded to this carbon. Therefore, this carbon is secondary. Okay, and the name for this is what we call an isopropyl. Okay, remember that you have also an alkyl that is a propyl. Okay, a propyl is CH3, CH2. CH2. But in this case, your one carbon is actually uh, abundant or the, the, the one that is actually uh, bonded as a substituent is actually the secondary carbon, not the primary carbon. Okay? So therefore, this one here is what we call an isopropyl. Okay? Because of the uh, the formation of the secondary carbon. Okay, so this secondary carbon would now be attached to, to, to a parent chain. So we will be discussing that later on. And that substituent now is what we call an isopropyl. Okay, so we will learn that more. Okay, we have also different kinds of uh, alkyl, which is butyl group, which which we can be distinguished as a primary, secondary, or tertiary butyl. Okay, so for a primary butyl, you notice that this carbon here is a primary carbon. Okay, because this carbon is actually bonded only to one carbon. Okay, so this carbon here is bonded to one carbon, then therefore this carbon is actually a primary carbon. Okay. And therefore, if it is linked to a parent chain, on this case, so you have here a linkage here to a primary carbon, then that substituent will become what we call an isobutyl, okay? Because of the primary carbon. Okay, how about if, if we are going to attach another CH3, so if we are going to... to uh, transfer this H3 to that carbon, so this will now become a secondary carbon. So our next example is that this carbon becomes a secondary. Why? Because it is attached to two carbons. Okay, so one carbon here and the other carbon there. So therefore, if this carbon or this structure is actually attached to a parent chain of hydrocarbon, then this becomes a secondary uh, carbon, then that is, the name would be sec-butyl, okay? So how about the last example? Okay, so you notice that this carbon here is actually attached to three carbons, okay? So one, two, and three. So therefore, this carbon now would be, uh, classification would be, a tertiary carbon, okay? So, this is an alkyl which is a butyl group, so therefore, this becomes a third butyl or tertiary butyl, okay? So, the name for that would be a third butyl or tertiary butyl, okay?